Good evening all, this is the Mad Monarchist with the politically incorrect truth about the French Revolution. Part 1 will be focusing on King Louis the 16th. I'm sure everybody's seen the popular portrayal of King Louis the 16th. He's always portrayed as someone who was rather weak, kind of dull, not a strong character, uncaring, and basically kind of dim. The truth, of course, is completely different. He was not a weak man, but he was certainly not a tyrant. If he had been a tyrant, he probably wouldn't have gotten the situation he found himself in later. The French Revolution never would have happened under someone like King Louis XIV. But Louis had the important qualities necessary for a king. He was a very moral man, and he cared for his people. He had a lot of genuine care and compassion for his people. That's not what most histories say, but they're written by the revolutionaries. And the only reason King Louis XVI was not a successful monarch was not because of any fault of his own, but because you can't really be a successful monarch if you have people who are traitors, constantly working to undermine everything you do, who don't want you to succeed, who don't, do not want your country to succeed, because they wanted to destroy the system, they wanted to destroy the monarchy, they wanted to destroy the traditional Catholic Kingdom of France. But here are the facts, the politically incorrect truth about King Louis XVI. Most people do not know this. King Louis XVI did not raise taxes. He would have liked to have cut them, but that wasn't possible given how deeply in debt France was. He ended the state monopoly on grain and that reduced the cost of bread for poor people. Grain was, became cheaper because there was no monopoly on it, and that greatly aided the poor. It made bread a lot cheaper. He radically, drastically cut back spending at Versailles from what it had been. Cut government expenditures. He ended the allowances for aristocrats who were not serving the state, who didn't really do anything, but in the past they got an allowance just because of who they were. He said, no, no more of that. He improved the courts, the legal system, made, made the legal system in France much more fair than it had been. He improved conditions in the prisons greatly over what they had been, and a lot of people know about the Bastille, and they think about the storming of the Bastille as the start of the French Revolution. Politically incorrect truth is the Bastille was not that bad a place. It might have, it might have looked really imposing and formidable, but it really was not bad on the inside, and there was practically no prisoners there when they stormed the place. But King Louis XVI abolished torture, said we're not going to have any more of that, and he ended forced labor in France. When they had a public project to do, usually they would just have forced labor, and everyone was liable for a service of forced labor. He got, he got rid of that. To compensate for that, to, do, to pay for the public works that would have to be done to pay people instead of having forced labor, he had to have land taxes. And of course only the wealthy people in France at that time, the aristocrats, were about the only people who owned property. They didn't like that, but he enacted a land tax on all property owners and he paid property taxes himself. He said he wanted to set a good example, so he paid all the property taxes that everyone else was, ha was having to pay for all the lands that was owned by the crown of France. Most people don't know that. Most people don't know he provided free medical care to the poor. Most people don't know that he re-established the parliaments in France, the local governments, where people had a greater say in these things. Because King Louis saw that under his great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather under King Louis XIV, power had been vastly centralized, starting with Louis XIII and Louis XIV, power had been greatly centralized in France, and that worked out okay when you had someone like King Louis XIV in charge, but under King Louis XV wasn't so good. And so King Louis XVI was trying to take things back from that extreme, to go back and decentralize power more, and he was doing that, and he was in the process of doing that when the French Revolution broke out. He also granted civil rights to Protestants for the first time since the Edict of Nantes was revoked. He was not a tyrant. He was not an autocratic man, and he was not an uncaring man. And what really the kind of the last straw that broke out before the French Revolution, when they when they started to things started to get out of hand, was because of a tax increase. 
a tax increase that was needed to pay the cost of the war in America with Great Britain because the Kingdom of France came to the aid of the American colonials fighting against the British Crown in the American War for Independence. King Louis XVI agreed because he was trying to restore, to recoup the losses from the reign of his grandfather and restore France's prestige in the world. And so he's going to help the Americans, but then the Americans went and made a separate peace with Britain. So they got their independence. France ended up losing the war. Had to, he had to pay for that somehow. And so in order to pay for that, he decided to raise taxes. But he was only raising taxes on the wealthy people, on the rich. He didn't actually raise taxes on the poor, but not many people knew that because of the revolutionaries, because of the people who were just traitors and, and anti-monarchy and wanted to destroy the system, they went out and just told half the truth and spread it around all the papers. All they said was the king was raising taxes. And people got very upset about that and very outraged. Well, the king was raising taxes, but he wasn't raising taxes for the vast majority of the people in France, only on the wealthy. But they didn't tell him that. And that was what prompted the calls for the for the king to recall the Estates General, which he finally did. But even that wasn't the great uh, success most people think it was, and he was very reluctant to do that. And some people have used that to say, well, King Louis XVI wasn't really wanting to give people a voice. That's why he didn't want to recall the Estates General, because things would get out of hand, which they did. But it's not true that he feared what the people had to say. The problem was that the people, most of the people who were there to represent the third estate, the common people of France, were not the common people themselves, but were lawyers. Lawyers who were infected with all of the treasonous ideas and kind of idealistic left-wing revolutionary thought. And they did not have the best interests of the people at heart, and they didn't agree with what the people wanted anyway. They wanted to tear down the Kingdom of France. They wanted to tear down the traditional Catholic monarchy. The regular people of France were not in favor of that. And that was why King Louis XVI was very reluctant to recall the Estates General. And we can see, by the way things turned out, that he was completely correct to be hesitant about that. And that's the politically incorrect truth about King Louis XVI and the French Revolution. Next time, we will take a look at his consort, the much maligned Queen Marie Antoinette. Until next time, stay mad, my friends. We all go a little mad sometimes, haven't you?